Ever had problems with the toilet system in your house? Do you wonder where all this waste goes after flushing? Say less when it comes to sea vehicles like an aircraft carrier. Whether you like it or not, nature calls in the most unexpected times even during duty hours. So what happens to the garbage generated by the thousands of sailors who use the restroom on Navy ships? There are roughly 400 or more restrooms on board this floating city, which can accommodate thousands of sailors much like the population of a medium-sized city. What happens to all this waste and is it dumped into the ocean right away? If you are as curious as I am, you have come to the right spot. Welcome to another episode of High Technology. If you are new to this channel, welcome. Be part of this ever-growing platform of viewing some of the cutting-edge technologies around the planet by subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you won't miss any incredible videos in the future. For now, buckle up as we take an inside look of flushing a toilet on a Navy ship. The slang term head gall is used in the Navy to describe a response to the elements. This is due to the head sounds funny, huh? Being the name of the restroom on an aircraft carrier. But it actually makes perfect sense to refer to toilets as heads. Towards the past, the only person who had a private restroom nearby his or her rooms in the stern or the back of the ship was the captain. The toilet would be in the bow or front of the ship, somehow below the water line, and would be used by the remaining crew members. The ocean's water might flush away any waste in a restroom were constructed in the ship's bows. Furthermore, because sailing ships cannot shift in the direction of the wind, the restrooms would be downwind so that any bad scents wouldn't linger for a long time. Heads may now be mounted almost everywhere on a contemporary ship with the holding tanks and the manual powered pumps that are standard equipment. This implies that the head's contents do not need to be washed into the ocean by waves. US aircraft carriers no longer flush bathroom waste into the ocean, despite the fact that it is simple to do so. Instead, before being dumped into the water, toilet waste goes through a comprehensive procedure in order to ensure that the waste is thoroughly clean and safe for disposal. It will take a large amount of time, money, and infrastructure when a sailor flushes because it starts a very long chain of processes that are all tied to one another. How then is the sewage from the laboratories on an aircraft carrier managed? Fortunately, processing wastewater in this fashion won't impact anyone's next trip to the beach. One of the few tasks on board a ship that demands the highest level of attention to detail is the disposal of sewage that has been produced on the carrier. It is impossible to keep the ship's sewage on board for a lengthy period of time. This necessitates its release into the ocean. Even though it is technically possible to dump sewage into the ocean, there are now various requirements that must be met before sewage can be dumped directly overboard. The toilet urinals and WC scuppers produce the majority of the sewage waste that is generated on an aircraft carrier. According to the rules, sewage cannot be dumped into the ocean until it has been cleaned. And to be in compliance with the rules, the ship must be at least 4 nautical miles from the nearest shore. Aircraft carriers fall under the same category. How much sewage waste is generated by an aircraft carrier's toilet? The Ford, which is the newest aircraft carrier in the USA, is officially manned by 4,500 39 sailors and marines. Sailors urinate at even lace-based intervals, and many of them like to do so as soon as they wake up in the morning. Where did they go then? The majority of people are unaware that the waste is either sent into a treatment plant located deep beneath the ship's bowels, no pun intended, or that it goes through rigorous cleaning procedures before being released back into the water. Gray water, which is the water gathered from bathroom sinks and showers as well as laundry and galleys or kitchens, and black water commonly known as sewage or the two categories into which sanitary wastewater on ships is divided. The bilge water needs to be treated separately because it contains oils that have leaked from the machinery and the engine compartments. Why don't we examine the sequence of events that occur on an aircraft carrier right after a member of the US Navy flushes a toilet, shall we? Aeration chambers or what they standardly call as bioreactors are the first thing black water passes through as it enters the integrated tree treatment system. Bacteria that are responsible for dissolving organic contaminants in the wastewater are present in this chamber. Pumping the sewage via a membrane filtering system clears the water of even more impurities. The subsequent chamber, which has the purpose of settling out the particles, will receive the wastewater that is used to clean the biofilter reactor. The mixture will be further divided into high-quality water and sediment for further processing after settling in the sedimentation tank. The clarity compartment frequently has 
has slanted sides and is of the hopper style. Sludge is directed into the suction side of the airlift tube by these sides, which also prevent it from adhering and stacking up. The sedimentation tank's bottom dwelling untreated sludge is pushed back into the biofilter reactor where it is once more broken down by microorganisms. The subsequent event takes place at the air blower. Two air blowers are normally installed in the biofilter reactor with one acting as a backup. These blowers are in charge of delivering air in the form of air bubbles which helps microorganisms form. Furthermore, it helps with back draining the sludge, moving the sludge from the sedimentation tank and giving air to the activated carbon tank. Before being released into the ocean, the treated sewage must first go via the discharge pump. The final chamber of the STP houses the discharge pump's components, which are provided in a duplex configuration. They are centrifugal pumps that are attached to their engines which are designed to clear grass debris. The sterilizing tank's level switches which have been fitted are what manage the pump's automatic mode of operation. When removing the sludge from the compartments after cleaning the tanks inside, the pump is often operated manually. After going through this procedure, the water is clean enough to be disposed of in the ocean and free of hazardous microorganisms. Gray water frequently only contains a tiny number of potentially dangerous germs. Thus at this time, the water is kept in a storage tank. Before being shipped out to sea, it simply needs to receive the barest of treatments. Toilets on aircraft carriers frequently become blocked, making it impossible for excrement to travel freely. Therefore, when the sailor flushes, the poop doesn't go at all, which is a dreadful situation for sailors aboard aircraft carriers. Instead, a protracted chain reaction of cleaning the excrement is started. So how do aircraft carriers address this occurrence? The two newest aircraft carriers of the Navy routinely have clogged modern toilets. According to a recent congressional audit revealing $130 billion in overestimated long-term maintenance expenses, the ship's sewage system is cleaned periodically with specialist assets costing roughly $400,000 per flush. According to a report from the Government Accountability Offices for the Gap that the Senate Armed Services Committee ordered the new toilet, which is similar to the kind used on a commercial plane, frequently and unexpectedly becomes clogged. As a result, during the ship's service life, unplanned maintenance actions will be necessary. The pipes are too small, so when many people flush the toilet at once in the morning, the suction isn't as strong as it should be. This is the main reason why blockage happens so frequently. Doubts have been raised regarding whether the frequently clogged plumbing is even sustainable due to the high demand of sailors using heads across the enormous ships, as well as rising expenditures and lengthy hours dedicated to unanticipated repair. Aircraft carriers have stood the test of time in making ways for water trips to be as convenient and comfortable as possible. What are your thoughts on their sanitary system? Have you ever witnessed these kinds of things in an aircraft carrier before? If you were given the chance, how would you like to do it differently? Share it with us in the comments but for now, that's a wrap. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't spare us the like and hit that subscribe button together with the notification bell so you won't miss any upcoming insightful videos. Once again, this has been High Technology serving you the best and cutting edge contents on the highest form of technology available on the planet. Catch you up real soon.